Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out Zombies by a developer who goes by The Big Nick. And I think we are in for quite a treat today. I've seen some previews of this game and it looks absolutely awesome. It's like an isometric arena style shooter and I have to warn you it's very violent. Uh, but you'll understand it's somewhat justifiably so. Uh, we're playing the role of a person who is absolutely sick of bureaucracy and in a matter of satire is essentially violently dispatching all of the people who have been oppressing him in his uh, abilities to move forward in his life and feel satisfied in what's going on uh, with himself. So I, before I get into this one, I do want to just very briefly uh, mention a couple things. So the the LD coverage is it's pretty much wrapped up for now. Uh, as we're going on though, I'm going to be uh, actually hitting a bunch of very often requested games uh, and as well as trying to grab a lot more of developer requested games uh, coming in the next couple weeks or so. So if you uh, are a developer that's requested a game and it's uh, been far too long since I got into it, chances are hopefully it'll show up pretty soon. Uh, and if it hasn't, likely reasons are that I, I had trouble recording it or there was some other sort of issue behind the scenes with that. Um, so. Let's jump into this one. I have to mention also, while I was sitting on the title screen for quite a while, as I often do while I'm getting my recording set up all good and the, the sound level and all that, uh, excellent, excellent soundtrack, and uh, the developer was kind enough to send me a promotional key for the soundtrack for this one, and I'm uh, going to be listening the crap out of it. Uh, very good stuff, so uh, really positive impressions all around, and I haven't even started the game yet, so let's do that. Let's load all the things, all 255 of them. And let the rampage begin. Hey Ted. Catch that game last night? Prioritize action. Alright, dude. See you later, Ted. <laughs> you know how we always make fun of management of being zombies? Check out Ted. Is he eating a human being? I think he's definitely eating a human being. His char is gonna be all over that. I know, right? Hey, look at that. Board meeting just got in. That's a lot of blood. Why is the entire board of directors covered in blood? I bet they charge the dry cleaning bill to the corporation, too. Sure. Hey, do you think... Uh, 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 oh. well, there's something you don't see every day. I need my faith! Don't uh, bench me! Seriously? Uh, uh, we've worked in the same cubicle for seven years. You're not going to avenge me? I mean, I got this report to do, so... Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, wow, I have to say that was quite a little cutscene there. Um, I, I want to say before we get started, I, I have to note that the, uh, the art style really reminds me a lot of uh, Paul Greasley uh, from, uh, you know, Under the Garden fame and Under the Ocean more recently. Uh, cool style, actually. It's it's not bad or anything. I actually quite like it, and the the isometric thing works well with it. So he's eating my face. Number one, find an exit and get the hell out of here. Two, punch zombies in the face, but don't get too close. Three, avenge Norm or whatever. Yeah, okay. Okay, so these zombies are actually fairly quick. Uh, let's investigate our office surroundings. We can do quite a bit of damage. We can jump. Oh. Right, okay, so I'm just going to not be able to jump out of that situation. I, I thought maybe I could jump over some of these collapsed uh, cubicle walls. Ah, I can even do some damage to the individual wall. Um, the uh, the heavier looking ones. What are you doing? Oh, are you my buddy now? Can we get through? Can't seem to make a dent in any of this stuff. Alright, let's avoid that then. What are you doing in here? Is there a... looks like a friend, maybe? I don't know. Who cares? I'm just looking for weapons or some kind of other thing to do other than that. Quite a bit of damage, Mon. I like these little effects, the, uh, the paper falling down everywhere. Maybe I should punch some zombies at some point soon. I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, controls are nice and simple, by the way, just uh, mouse to point around and WASD, space to jump, and shift to run. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much going on over here. Okay, I guess I gotta make my way in. 
Where'd my friend go? Oh, she's gonna run through everybody. Oh, another friend? I hate when zombie games make you save everybody. It's too hard. Alright, I guess this is the way forward. Looks like I no longer have the ability to move or open doors, so it's kind of like... Uh, we just gotta find whatever's there already. And let's see if we can save some people in the process. I guess that sort of makes it a little bit easier uh, to point out a linear direction for the player to go through. going on over here? Okay, we got another person to save. Um, can't seem to do much about that. There we go. Alright, well that was it. Dispatched 0 of 33 zombies, rescued 4 of 13 persons, destroyed 159 of 1385 things. Is this zombie bothering you? Yeah, he's trying to eat my face. So, uh, since I just saved your life and everything, do you want to maybe go out sometime? Um, there's something. I just have to get over here. Okay, um, I'll catch up with you later, after the zombies and stuff. Hey, you forgot your baseball bat. You mind if I use this? Because of the zombies and stuff? <laughs> Is that zombie bothering you? Hit some zombies in the face with the baseball bat and press redhead girl, find an exit. This we can do. Yeah, I feel a little bit better equipped for the situation. Now that I have some sort of valid means to defend myself. Looks like you can just about keep them at bay, but it's not exactly guaranteed. Uh, there is a person to rescue over here. I kind of wish these cordoned off areas were a little bit further out, but I kind of understand why we needed to have that shade there. You know, on one level you can't really make this office go on forever. But on another level it seems like maybe it would be easier to navigate around. So these people that I'm trying to save here, I really guess I need to keep them like right tight on me. That is an elaborate janitor's closet in there. Um, not a good direction to go in. So you gotta worry about, I, like, um, managing these groups of your friends and also managing the groups of the zombies and looking for a way forward. It's a little bit information overload at times. But I'm also probably taking it a little bit too seriously and should probably just enjoy the chaos a little bit too. Weaving in and out. I don't know what's going on. Like, the, all these people that I thought I was saving, they're all gone. I don't know if they're really following or what. Never been a huge fan of escort quests, so a little bit disappointed that there seems to be people all the time that are going to need to follow me around. Looks like a lot of work with all this pixel art, man. And pretty well done. I mean, it's got a lot of character to it. And the fact that everything is destructible and deformable and like, well, you know, more destructible than deformable, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's just little bits of stuff everywhere, little particle effects, stat, uh, sparks, and all those little bits of debris that form up. Alright, where did you all go? What? Everybody left. <laughs> I didn't mean to actually finish the level there, but apparently that's what happens. Alright, we gotta fight Tim the Project Manager. His weapon is red tape, strength 1,000 he uh, healths. So this is like a boss battle and he's gonna hurl red tape at me. This is like a special infected. Quite an interesting condition to be flashing blue. Is that him telling he's about to throw his red tape, or is that me doing damage to him? I can't tell. Yeah, okay, that's his tell for before he shoots. Give me time to get out of the way. Quite a messy affair, all this blood everywhere. 
it's cool that it's, uh, you know, when you're dealing with pixels and even uh, voxels to some extent, like, you're not really limited to decals and stuff. It can just be what it is, and it's nice to see, like, the, the amount of crazy damage that can add up over time. I have to draw the parallel, and I know this is a, a bit of a loose comparison, but uh, Hotline Miami is definitely the thing I'm thinking about as I'm playing this, because I, I was like, what other crazy isometric, like, super violent games have I played recently, and that's pretty much the only one that comes to mind. Alright, looks like you heal a little bit over time. Takes quite a while, though. And this guy's got a lot of health. I should probably be wailing on him a little bit harder with this bat, but I'm trying to take it really careful. Yeah, that desk is, is generally, I would say, irreparable at this point. That was some good damage there. It's kind of hard to gauge the... Oh, gauge the distance. Yeah, I didn't make it. Let's try that again. Alright, let's take it from the top. It's probably going to change the whole dynamic when we have a longer range weapon. If there is... Yeah, there looks like there's some guns in this. I should mention this game's only a few bucks, uh, and it is on green light. So I'm gonna highly urge you guys, if you find this uh, to your liking, go give it a vote on green light. It only takes a second. And it does encourage uh, a developer who is just one man. And I imagine this took a really large amount of time and effort putting this together. Uh, this is also available uh, via Desera and a couple of other platforms, in including uh, you can get this for iOS. I think it was only a dollar, which is pretty cool. I ne of course, you can always uh, also purchase the soundtrack separately. Which doesn't seem like too bad of an idea, honestly. Maybe I'm a sucker for this kind of music, but when, it, when it's done right, like you can just tell, and this is one of those times for sure. This is a little grindy. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, it's not the end of the world or anything, but it seems like an awfully long time beating on this guy. And really, in, a, in essence, there's nothing really hard about this. I'm just trying to avoid getting hit. And really, the only difficult part is just judging how f far or close you can stand to this boss before you're going to take some damage. There we go. Clear. I destroyed Zombie Manager Tim. Zombie! Not a zombie! You are a fly zombie! Look at you, you're smug little guy! You're covered in blood! You're covered in blood too! I'm not a zombie! Prove it! I haven't said a single buzzword or tried to delegate anything to you! I'm not a zombie! You make a valid point, you make a valid point. But we'll be safe if we can stick together, so why don't we team up? I don't know, boy. You're just fine on me. So can I at least borrow your chainsaw for a bit? No, you cannot borrow my chainsaw. It's a quick go, come on. No, you can't have a quick go. I just <laughs> you from home. I think management would ever cough up enough money to buy me such a decent piece of machine. Why would you even have a chainsaw in an office building anyway? I'm the groundskeeper, you twat. Who do you think trims the shrubberies? No one, I suppose. I suppose the shrubberies trim themselves. You're sounding more like a manager every second, boy. You better watch yourself. I have no qualms about putting the chains on your face. I love these cutscenes. I think those are some of my favorite parts so far. They're legitimately funny. Uh, at least I find them that way. Uh, enter the chainsaw. The groundskeeper can help destroy zombies with his chainsaw. Try to keep him close. Don't pester him about barring the chainsaw. He's very protective. I got that impression for sure. Alright, let's have him help. I guess we'll name him Willy. Is he... he doesn't really want to help that much. I guess that's fine. I was kind of expecting when I started this, uh, it was going to be more like roaming the office environment and finding weapons and using whatever you can find. So I guess I'm a little bit disappointed that it's a little bit more scripted than that, but at the same time, like, this makes sense too. And I don't know why I even had that preconception, it just seemed like such a, a rife environment. You know, office supplies always make for good entertainment. 
even with the living, so, you know, once you mix up the whole zombie element, the tongue-in-cheek level goes very high. And zombie uh, games, movies, media in general, I mean, they always seem to really do well when you can bring the humor in, as well as the horror. It's always a fine balance, unless you're going for a, you know, the particularly desolate, like, 28 days later, as depressing as humanly possible type of uh, horror zombie deal. And really, you can only handle so many of those movies and TV shows at one time. Eventually, they get to be a little too soul-crushing. I think that 28 Weeks Later was probably one of the most depressing movies ever, except for, like, Children of Men. Ah. Oh. My father never told me he loved me. I hear you, friend. Say... Can I borrow your chainsaw for a little bit? No, get off! We need it! Seriously, uh, your arm's off. Can't. Okay, just... to be too nice. Bye, Jane. Sweet, sweet Jane. Well, I had a feeling that's what was going to happen. <laughs> Zombies are more dangerous uh, when they have arms and legs. Uh, chainsaws can remove arms and legs, thus make them less dangerous. Synergy! <laughs> Alright. Let's have a look-see. How do we get... Oh, okay. This angle can uh, sometimes obscure your path forward a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Can I still not get through these doors? That seems a little silly. They're still quite a threat, these zombies. I kind of figured they'd go down a little easier as well. I guess that was an arm. They're pretty active as well. They seem to walk around pretty quickly. Alright. Thankfully, I've got Run on my side. Gotta have the proper tools to deal with the zombie apocalypse. Uh, not too many people on my side in this level, it seems. So this is mostly like a maze navigation game with some combat thrown in. That didn't work very well. Uh, and then you add the excellent soundtrack, the destructible environments, and the tongue-in-cheek humor. I think this is definitely a decent grab. Okay, let's see. How do I... Okay, I gotta mislead. Get him over there, go around... Like I'm playing a game of football. Uh, not sure that was a good move. Because honestly, fighting these things off, I don't know if that's that good of a, an idea when there's this many of them. Usually, you try and get them like one at a time if you have to. I mean, it's, it's kind of lame probably that I'm just eschewing combat entirely. But that's the way I'm playing. Oh, okay, see... <laughs> You get into this issue with the collision, and sometimes, like, you can't really tell if you're gonna actually do any damage to them, or if they're just gonna get you. And in that case, the angle made it a little difficult. Alright, let's... Oh, come on. Run to the left, all the way around, and then we're gonna get a huge spike of them over here. All the way down the hallway, I don't know what to do about that, let's just run. Okay. That didn't really work that well. I didn't rescue anybody. Barely touched anything.
I certainly wasn't expecting the floor to bleed. Okay, uh, aim past the zombies for great or accuracy. Reload your gun manually during a lull in action so you don't die while reloading like an idiot. Find an exit. Alright, let's try out this... Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, yeah, that definitely can't be good for me. I'll completely agree. So I've only got 27 bullets, gotta keep that in mind. What if I shoot the civilians, is that gonna be an issue? Jeez, there's like way too many things to really be able to do a whole lot with this. There we go. Oh, good enough. I'm mostly just trying out the how the pistol works. Seems like the best case scenario always seems to be to mostly just run past everything if you can. And eventually, you get cornered, and there's not a whole lot you can really do about it. Because right now, none of these weapons are really going to be sufficient. I mean, the chainsaw doesn't even really do all that much damage. Or at least it knocks them back, so that's helpful. Oh, and I'm out of ammo already. Let's see if I can sneak through that door. Nope. There's just a little bit of awkwardness, like when you can't exactly navigate the way you want to. And that does make it a little tricky sometimes, and maybe just a little frustrating. Certainly not a game breaker or anything, but it's like... You know, it can just add to that little one shove that might push you away... ...from the enjoyment you're having. I also quite wish that I could completely knock my way through these walls. I know I said that already, but the same with the doors, like, it seems a little frustrating since I have... Well, well, maybe I can later on. I shouldn't probably be judging that yet. Alright, get down here. I don't know how I'm supposed to save guys in this. This seems a little bit too chaotic. Oh, I rescued four of six that time. That number seems to be a little inconsistent, unless I'm just missing something. Okay, weapon, buzzword, vomit, so he's a boomer, strength, 2,500 healths. Avoid being puked on, feed this man wafer, a wafer thin mint of justice. Well, having a gun is certainly going to help, and apparently a lot of ammo. It seems like I should probably be very accurate, considering, I mean, I'm, I've got my crosshair literally on him. But sometimes he still missed. But, you know, that's just the, uh, the fault of the man firing the gun, I suppose. Nobody's 100% accurate with a firearm. Especially at this range. You'd be awfully dumb to, like, run in at this point. Oh, look at that. He's screwed himself. He's trying to shoot... Oh, no he hasn't. I thought he was just shooting all those boxes, he wasn't really able to get his vomit out on me. I really like these, uh, the shell casings that are, uh, spent all over the floor, it's a nice touch. It's uh, incredible how something as small as a simple one pixel can actually make a visual difference. Is he dead? No, he's got 20 more health, there he is. Very, very 
I seriously, I'm very entertained by these. I, I think the uh, the developer might want to think about making a, a short like uh, web clip series of these characters interacting. You could probably make quite a uh, following out of that. Zombie problem, shotgun solution. Security guard can blow away zombies with a shotgun. Try to keep him close. So I guess we're gonna go with the same solution uh, as we did with the chainsaw situation. And we're going to find that this uh, shotgun wielding man is going to have a hard time with this zombie outbreak. Cool too that we're not just staying in the office building like we're, we're going through the car park now. All different sprites and a lot of different cars. I mean some of them are recolors so that's fine but... Looks like a lot of artwork. Man, there's a lot of zombies here. I don't know what the best way to approach this is. I'm glad my guy can jump pretty well, though. But I'm thinking at this point, we probably got a, a pretty fair look at what to expect from zombies. Uh, the one thing that <laughs> I feel kind of bad saying this, but like uh, that name in particular is going to be a nightmare uh, when it comes to like SEO optimization. I, it's going to be very hard to uh, naturally discover a game that's just called Zombies. So, uh, unfortunately, well, I mean, I'm going to try and do my part to get the word out, and hopefully you guys can help as well. But uh, that is that's a tough one. And I have to say, once you know where the exits to the levels are, it's going to certainly speed up your progress. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna wrap this episode up on that. Just wanted to get the shotgun so I could blast it. Oh yeah, that's right. See, this is what I wanted. Oh, that's what a relief to know that we've got sweet weapons like that and gas cans and stuff too. What did I just get? I got a fireball? The explosive ammo? Holy crap. Alright, well, everything's on fire now. I think this is where the game's gonna hit its stride now from here on. Now that we've got, it looks like the majority of the weapons. These guys don't look too good. No human can puke. Which and live, they're beyond help. Yeah, that seems about right. So, as we run through all this chaos and havoc, uh, I will remind you, as always, to please head on over to my website, www.indie-impressions.com. Check out all the videos, old and new, visit the forums, perhaps buy something with your earned pixels, which you get just by leaving comments on the videos. It's quite simple, actually. And uh, when you're done with the website, head on over to facebook.com slash indie impressions. Uh, I post every day's new videos over there, so if you'd like to grab those uh, nice and easy, just uh, leave a like on the page and they will all show up right in your Facebook feed. Makes it nice and convenient for you. And if you have any comments, criticisms, suggestions, questions, or you want to suggest a game, or if you're an indie dev and you want to send me a review copy of your game, uh, just as this developer did, the uh, quickest way to get in uh, touch with me is at Rockley Smile on Twitter, and I also have a contact form right on the website. And uh, I will also take uh, any kind of PMs via Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you got is fine with me. So, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and please make sure you come back again tomorrow for another awesome indie game. Very cool, this one, Zombies. Uh, I definitely recommend a look. The, uh, all the links are going to be right in the description, as I always leave them. I'm going to have, like, the green light link and the, uh, all the, the websites that are relevant to this one. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you check this one out, and I hope you have a lovely night. Later!